Hi there friends and welcome to episode 25 of the tutorial sect. I'm Icon and today we will dive a little bit deeper into agencies and I want to work around the body cultivation a little bit more today because our good friend Pu Ching Ching needs some more remoldings and we're going to try our best to get into the next phase here because I have gathered a lot of new insights and I want to share them with you. We will also cover up all manner of different things that happen in between those lines because there's always something showing up. We're still looking for stat increasers, we're still looking for lots of inspiration for Helion so she might learn more max chi skills, so there's a lot of things which we need to do today. So first off, I want to start with the agencies. Last episode or a couple of episodes ago, we upgraded the Mount South Agency, which enabled us to find the Shandao Cultivation Ball there. But that was not the only thing that happened there. With the upgrade of the main hall, we also unlocked a new building slot, which is really, really cool. Overall, these dojo constructions, you basically can totally ignore them, because all this allows you is to send your disciples there and fight some random dudes. I haven't fully understood what that, what the functionality of the dojo was. Feel free to enlighten me. I personally found it very useless and therefore we're just going to construct a new logging camp over here. Upgrading your agencies therefore is really, really powerful because with every upgrade we can build new buildings here. At Central Plain, I wasn't done building either. So I'll just put up a mine there because we had a shortage of brownstone quite often. And overall, Great Desert wasn't uh, wasn't finished either. Ah, oh, no, it's finished there. So you see, once these locks show up, there's no more capability of building stuff. And it's quite simple to upgrade these agencies. You need to hit a certain level of believers. So. Same goes for the upgrade. After the intermediate upgrade, we will need to hit 100,000 believers. And you see the numbers of wooden brownstone are just climbing and climbing and climbing. Therefore, you can't allocate too much brownstone or wood there. So this leads me to the general recommendation that you should mostly focus your, your attention on these uh, agencies with those little flags. Because at these agencies, you can just buy and build areas which bring you direct income. And the more you upgrade these agencies, the more income you will get. The city agencies, in contrast, allow you only to build other, build, uh, other stuff which doesn't yield direct income. They're mainly used to get the full control over a town by destroying the enemy followership and increasing your own followership. But that's all these buildings do. No town agency will bring you any any resource income. And the influence income you receive here, you also receive influence income from the other agencies. So that's the gist of it. But that's not all we can do to enhance the power of our agencies. Because you see, the abbot at an agency, we already talked about that, they are exchangeable, but they are also yielding a certain couple of stats here. So what we can do now is we can add disciples to these places. You see, they're, they're, this is uh, 0 of 20, and a smaller agency can only store 12, 10 disciples. So you see the higher upgraded your agency is, the more disciples you can fit in there. The thing here is, the agent's stats are combined with 10% off. Well, okay, that's not really fully put in there. But what we can see here is we can add more and more people with battle and social skills into the disciplehood here and increase the power of our agency. The easiest way to do so is just to go over there to the Spirit Master Hall, recruit all these duties, and then first thing we do, we of course check out if there's awesome cultivation material here, just like this guy. This looks quite decent. The base stats aren't too high though. Well, 
Maybe we can pump that up with stat increasers. So I want to try that out. We're going to recruit this dude. And now we're just going to sort them cons considering their social skills. So we see that this guy is a pretty socially talented person. We recruit him and now we can put them over to the other areas there. And you see here the interesting stats for an area. It's charisma, intelligence, battle, social, mining, and farming. So we see here that we are quite well off with social and such, and charisma is not that high. So we're noticing we're, we want to send charisma, charismatic people with a high social rating. Overall, you see here how well off your, your agencies are. And let's, let's pump up riverbank planes today. Let's try that. So we're going to add as many socially good people into riverbank planes today. And then we're going to check out if their charisma of 9 and social of 15 became better afterwards. You know, just to give us a, a example of what we're doing here. Okay, so the other folks here are not too strong. I'm still looking for other strong stats there. Attribute wise, this is also good to look for people with high attributes, high skills work as well. You, you, I think you get the idea by now. So we're going to send one of these poor people to be Hellgated and let's just wait until our young friends have arrived. And you might now ask yourself, why the heck should I bring any new disciples into my agencies and why should I increase those stats? The thing is, these stats directly influence how many followers you will receive whenever there's a charity event or any other uh, event resold successfully. So basically, the higher your social skill is, the more rewards you will get whenever a social event pops off and gets you a new amount of followers. So therefore amplifying and tuning your agencies is a really really good thing. Overall as you see here we have have that distribution that I got one town agency, all the outside agencies and there are still two wilderness agencies which I can't provide with enough wheat. So here's the thing you can't really change anything about that. It's up to you how to how to distribute that i personally consider a strong a, two strong town agencies as a good decision because i have the impression as if it was easier to gather high followerships in towns i mean it would make perfectly sense but i have no real proof of my theory there so feel free to add something into the comment section if you know about that because i always had the distinct feeling if the total amount of followers were always lower in those wilderness agencies compared to the town agencies but i'm not sure about that i personally think it would make sense lore wise and this game does a ton of things that do that make sense lore wise according to the law lore lore rah. okay so Halion just uh, got gifted 133k inspiration that's a good thing. Sometimes you're just lucky with your random events. Sometimes you just get a jolt of random chi and suffer from terrible injuries. Random events are just random events. So we're going to send Alien now over to uh, the to Mount Sal to gather up more inspiration. But I promised you body cultivation and we're going to do body cultivation. So I also want to dive into a couple of things that I learned recently. So first off, the room is not ideal. Just like uh, several people mentioned, we should aim for a actually ominous room due to the essences, but these essences are entirely optional. You can also remold without essences. That's no biggie. But these essences determine which kind of upgrades you receive while cultivating. So what I want to do to today is I want to follow a piece of really, really good advice that I've got lately. I want to amplify the mixed element arms as hard as I can until I reach the next breakthrough phase. Because with the next breakthrough phase, we enable ourselves to manipulate our organs, and that changes a lot. 
Also, I will talk a little bit about these upgrades because I've learned a lot about that too. And there has been some, some criticism about my doings there and it was absolutely right. So we're going to share that as well. So first off, we have to amplify our upper arm bone. So as you see here, I'll just select no essence and then you'll get the remold for free basically. So let's see, sharpened bone is a green one, so lucky us, boom. And here, one thing that I personally didn't notice before, whenever you enhance anything, you get a tempered or you get one of those tempered upgrades. So whenever I select enhanced flesh, I will always get one level of tempered flesh on top of that. With these upgrades, I... I want to talk about these upgrades now a little bit more. So as you see here, there's a line which states that this skill increases the secret body power slightly. Every line which tells you that it influences the secret body only influences this particular set of blueprints, if we want to call it like that. Any other upgrade which not specifically tells you that it influences the secret body will influence everything so it's a generic upgrade basically that's really important to know because i personally felt like that was one of the most confusing things that i've uh, encountered here in the body cultivation scene so let's see we did get the sharpened bone right away and well here so there the bottom lines increase the physical cultivator's physical strength slightly so every level of tempered bone will for one increase the sacred body's power endurance and true chi consumption rate but will also increase my max true chi cap lifespan appetite and strength keep in mind appetite body cultivators eat at some point tremendous amounts of food so we will need to stay up with that so here we've achieved the next layer of this skill and if you check it out the difference is quite quite brutal so there's a lot more power there in it than before so for the fourth layer we need just more of the same there so we're going to send him to remold his bones uh, a moment there Wait a sec, let's do that. And I also noticed a, another real big problem there. We are running out of food. But I, I know what helps there. We're going to get over to Nanping Village and steal some pork from my neighbors. Because that's what you do when you are a cultivator. So, jokes aside, we're now going to rearrange these skills. Or cultivate our body should rather say. And Hillian gathered 300,000, I believe, there. Boom. Just like that. That's really a lot. And we got ourselves a charity event at Riverbank Plains. Ha! <laughs> How fitting. So, a group of refugees. For refugees, we're going to give them food, because that sounds like something... something friendly to do. So let's see if Riverbank Plains... Oh. Wait a sec. Which one did I bump up there? Oh. Central Plain? Is that the one? We, we have to wait until the uh, new passerbys have arrived. So here we have somebody to be Hellgated. And this person has a chi sense of 42. Let's recruit that. This might be good material for the future. Base stats are a little bit shoddy, but little do I care. So, let's see what we got there. More sharpened bone. And the other skills there, I heard you guys recommending the uh, ancestral throwback in the uh, Musala area quite a lot. I'm going to introduce that when we go for the tempered flesh so here we go and riverbank plains just gained 60,000 followers that's massive like riverbank plains was at 10,000 before 
and is now my strongest uh, agency all of a sudden. And you see here, we just pumped up the social skill and the farming skill and whatnot, and uh, that's the power of amplifying your agencies. You will grow your followers way faster than before, and that's why you do that. So, left forearm bone. Okay. Meanwhile, we. Oh, Bangju is at place. Let's let her steal some pork from those friendly villagers because we're friggin' hungry. I mean, the thing is, this way of stealing food might be endlessly possible and always available for you. But the amount of micromanagement is a serious pain. So, take it into good consideration if you want to do that more often. That's all I want to say with that. Okay. But for now, whenever my agencies, whenever my place looks like that, I feel like it's a wise choice to just uh, slaughter us some animal. But, or well, gather some slaughtered animal, I should rather say. But that also brings me to the point that I consider more farming here. These bright green patches are fertile soil, and they are really, really good for growing stuff, because stuff grows faster in fertile soil. I mean, that uh, goes without saying, I guess. All right. So let's check out our good friend, the body cultivator. And meanwhile, Zuruji, she's uh, just chilling over there doing her thing. Okay. Red coat spiritualist. And we obviously need new farm tools. And the longer you play ACS, you will notice that you keep thousands of layers of windows active because you you want to get everything done at once. Welcome to madness. All right. Let's put this arm technique to its uh, max. Psychic Bone, Accuracy, and Defense Accessory. I personally think this works like every other game. Offense and defense are imperative. Correct me if this is wrong, but I think the, high, the higher your attack power, the better. Usually things work like that. Steel Bone, Endurance, okay. As you see here, my attack power right climbs a pretty uh, high amount with every rank of sharpened bone but I mean a sharpened bone sure sounds friggin nasty so here we go and now we only need to go for the flesh techniques so we got 400 stamina so we can work around with that as well I personally do love body cultivation a lot because it's just so fun to keep doing that so corrosive blood sounds pretty powerful too but i well i keep being very uh very conservative with e taking extra skills because i got no clue what i want to go for so miscellaneous auction we definitely will send somebody there because there's just too many good things that we will that we need right now so let's send Bangju. She's a good pick, and then to have some fun over there. All right. Let's go for some more tempered flesh. If there's nothing to pick, always go for that tempered flesh. So vitalized flesh, artifact suppression chance. That sounds like absolute useless crap. <laughs> Sorry for putting that out so blatantly. Okay. As you might notice, the uh, remold takes longer and longer the, the more levels of remold you have on that certain body part. So, there we go. The auction gives us here access to, well, the Lumina Core and the Prism Lotus are the most interesting things. I personally never buy question marked items because they're, they are just uh, horrible, in my personal opinion. Well, here, nine lifespan, nine years of lifespan for inspiration. Also not too horrible, but we don't want to spend money on that. 
The auction works really simple. You just uh, can't bet money until you are the highest bidder there. That's that. We're going to fast forward on the auction there until I have bought the necessary things that I want to have. See you in a minute. And there we are. I bought myself that Lumina Core and the Prism Lotus. I wanted to have that Phoenix Ironclad Feather, but sadly this went over the table for 15 grand or such and I didn't have the money after buying these two items. Lumina Core and Prism Lotus. Prism Lotus is the cultivation material for um, water-based cultivation and water... Well, no, water-based, that's wrong. Or wood cultivators. Wood cultivators will need a cold room. We're not there yet, but we will get there. And, well, overall, these spirit root items are very, very desirable. You can't, you literally can't have too many of those. Simple reason behind that is you will always be able to use them for something else. If you have finished your cultivation arrays, you can use them for missions, you can give them to other uh, sects, you can create medicine out of that. There's thousand uses for spirit root. So you guys were totally stating that I should take that ancestral throwback skill and so there I am. I'm taking that ancestral throwback skill. For some reason, well okay, it increases the uh, attack, the, the accuracy and the defense success and well I do trust the, uh, the opinion of the comment section there but i'd really like to have some explanation why you guys think that this skill is so good because i personally didn't i personally don't see why please help me send help to me dumb so we're going to need only the tempered flesh on that body part so i'll take only the tempered flesh there even though enhanced flesh can be upgraded nine times and there we go. So now that one is finished, and we're going to cancel there, and then we're going to do this. But I wanted to give our little friend here some time to eat some. As you see here, we gained a lot of uh, cultivation experience here, and now we are going to devour some. Because we can, you know. Let's see what we can devour. Devour. Bull hide. So, devouring items brings you not only uh, Essence, Earthquake and City of Abundance, but also a, bit, a little bit of Stamina. It, it depends on what you eat, mm -hmm. I think. So let's try boar meat. That didn't really do anything. I heard that uh, Spirit Dew is really good for... Uh, or stamina. So I really don't know what kind of food is preferable for stamina uh, on top of that, but we're gonna get there. First off, we will need her uh, here. I want to get City of Abundance into disaster relief there, and we're going to watch their place to make events happen more often. And, of course, we're going to send our Primordial Spirit Cultivator over there to make sure that we will help as quick as possible and as much as possible. Okay. Meanwhile, Zuruji hit her maximum. Wonderful. Okay, time to stop the meditation. So, here is one um, different breakthrough thing. Not every breakthrough in higher stages or generally in cultivation works the same. This is a special way of breaking through. She now needs to do as many adventures as possible to fill this bar. And you see, in this scenario, her social skill and her charisma are influencing how quickly she will get there. Her social skill is not too high, her charisma is not too high, so it will take her some time. I personally love to send cultivators like her then on some endless errand run for items which I need. For example here, non-paying village, bring me food we need, thank you. And that's that. So basically Roji will now do her breakthrough by traveling by by being a traveling food truck. I can't dig that. So let's start remolding here and 
I really would like to know what kind of food is really good for for stamina. I do know I did hear you guys that we are able to remove the spirit soil here. I think harvesting it should do the trick or you know. Well, there is some uh, way of uh, gaining resources from spirit grass, but I'm really not sure how that works. I'm sorry to tell you guys that there are a couple of things in this game where I still am clueless and I need to learn myself. That's just uh, because of the massiveness of the of the content there. So, disaster relief plus 600, wonderful. Okay. Let's keep remolding that arm. And, well, I, I, I realized that here's one thing I want to do. Ruji, you're going to change your clothing, please. The crane tunic and the crane skirt are going to be worn by Bangju. So we're going to change clothes here. The fire bath clothing will be worn now by her. Go girls, get dressed. There we go. Here's the thing. Bangju's uh, temperature tolerance is even with that gear at 782 degree. This room is only at a mild smoldering 306. So she can take that easily. But the more important thing is she can now learn from Hellion how to meditate and all the jazz. And then we're going to put her into perma cultivation there too. So Bangju is running around with almost 700k of experience, so that's also no big issue there. So, er, here. So I want to teach meditation and spectre refinement while we're at it. Deriv derivative calculation, why not? And, well, this one might be counteractive, but it's uh, teaching her a lot of uh, extra power. And these uh, these weather miracles I'm going to teach here as well, because there's just no reason not to. Zuruji is now mentally unstable because we... We stripped away the bonuses from her, so I'm not too surprised about that. So, if you look for any uh, specific upgrades more often, the toolbox, the tooltip will always tell you what kind of uh, skill you need to take to, um, or what kind of essence you need to take to enhance that skill. Hey, there's a new Yao guy. Please be a good cultivator. Oh well. Nope. Still waiting for that one uh, good cultivator Yao guy, because, you know, I need. There's a good chance that eating uh, stuff for stamina recovery needs to be cultivated first. Because once we are at the point where we can cultivate our organs, we can also increase the returns of certain actions. There's a massive amount of upgrading available for us, and we'll be getting there. Inactivating flesh. Secret power body. Body power moderately. Okay, that sounds like something you would want to have. But like I mentioned before, it's, uh, in, my per in my personal opinion, never wise to choose something where you have no clue what it's going to do to you. And there's nothing more horrible than locking yourself out of a uh, certain technique, but I think corrosive blood and such can be taken without any issue. But here, uh, I gotta say, it's 100% uh, inexperiencedness from my side, so... I'm sadly not the best information source at this point. But we got that, and now the secret uh, body here is at level 4, and there's now a fifth layer. Okay. I thought at 4 we were done. Looks like we're not. Okay. 
but I'll uh, continue here. So the attack power of one on, of one thousand two hundred sounds pretty crispy to me, and we're just going to do the same on the other side. Now, but before I do that, let's regenerate some stamina, just a little bit. And also, I want to check if Bangju is now capable of meditating properly. So she spent really a lot of her uh, points there, but she should now be able to just meditate there all day long. And also, ah, here, the, fi the fire essence bars have finally been finished. Oops, pull down the shift button to place several of those. And then we're going to send her meditating. Another thing that I wanted to do today was I wanted to increase Hellion's maximum chi. Because I'm really, really unhappy with her with her status there. So let's check that out. Earthbound Chi. Primordial Spirit. Max Chi modified by 15 grand. I buy that. So true form tier one. That's really not much. I'm now looking for primordial spirit, spirit skills here. For example, this is wonderful. Charisma in increase, max chi, and a subspirit. Subspirits will be something we will be covering up soon as well, but not today. So, spirit gale. But that's something I can't learn right now. Not enough experience. Okay, let's just learn those two skills and see what where this will bring us. So, 68 grand now. And 109k net, then. Though we still need 150k for the stat increase of rituals. We're still very far away from that. So, I'll just go over to my neighboring townships. Riverbank Plains. Ah, well, they're not really... They're not really wealthy in terms of inspiration there. So, well, I think we're better off waiting a couple of days then. Alright, so, Benevolence. Oh, we are. We are a tribulation spot for her. Wonderful. So, I'm going to stop the meditation here, and we're going to cover that topic in the, in the next episode. So, before she can progress... She will have to suffer through a tribulation. Some laws have that. We're going to cover that in the next episode. So I hope that was kind of helpful to you guys. I thank you so much for watching. As usual, drop your knowledge down there in the comment box. I am so happy that we get so much new knowledge there rolling. Of course, leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and you want to make it more visible to the rest of the world. And last but not least, check out the channel. There's daily content popping up there. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and you won't miss anything there. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.